When mountains seem to be falling on me And I call the name of Jesus That's why you're saying they are Lord. A season of transformation. And we have been told that transformation is a drastic or radical change or alteration. So it is impossible for us to say transformation has taken place if we don't see change in a person. Because if a non-performing organization is transformed, it becomes active and effective. All of a sudden we begin to realize the prophets So there has to be manipulation from an initial shape to a final desired shape So when a chemical substance is transformed So it is transferred into a total different substance. So in simple English we can say transformation is just a basic change of character. We have to see a little or no resemblance with the past transfiguration of a structure. In other words, we must see, we must see change in image. We must see change in appearance. There must be change in the shape of a thing. There must be change in the behavior. So if you say you are transformed and we still see you living a life that you lived yesterday we cannot agree with you that transformation has taken I have an example of a milli mill You know a milli mill It is powderish it is powderish. So if we take Mugayo and Rajana Madi and we take water as well and we also take the heat we put them together we come up with something called pap. So hallelujah. So what can we see? We see a radical change. We see something that was powderish together with something that is liquid and bent with something called heat giving us something which is solid. Because Water is liquid. And heat is gas. And millis, milli mill is powder. But the end product becomes a solid. So it has to be solid. The appearance now is solid. The character is something that you can eat. Now it is tasteful. If I can give you just powder or milli meal to eat, you will tell me no. In fact, if we find you eating milli meal just like that, we will say you are not okay upstairs. There has to be a mixture of things. 
to be some heat. People must enjoy the end result of what has happened. So if you have been transformed, it means that people must enjoy what you have become. We don't eat milly mill, it's not pap. And if you have not reached the stage which is enjoyable, then we call this thing moza. It means that if it is moza, it means that there is not enough heat that has been put in. Hallelujah. You must take it back to the microwave oven. You, you, you heat it and heat it. And then you taste it. And you feel it is not enjoyable. You take it back to the microwave oven. And then you taste it. And then if it is enjoyable. Then you know that transformation has taken place. That is what must happen in the life of a Christian. From, from, from grade R to grade 12, you see preparation for the child to go to Tejar. Show the rights to be transformation. When the child is in grade R, he talks like a child of grade R. When he is in grade 7, the child has changed. When he reaches to grade 12, the talk has changed. He is examined and tested. If he passes, then we say he's fit to go to a treasure. But if along the way he, he fails a grade, he must repeat it. He must repeat it. It is the same with our Christian work. If you repeat, if you fail a grade. You repeat it. Let me give you an example. Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights on the mountain. And God, with his own hand, he crafted the Ten Commandments. Moses comes down the mountain. When he comes down the mountain, he found the Israelites doing funny things. He allowed his anger to overpower him. He took the tablets and he threw them down. What did God say? Come up again on top of the mountain. Days and 49 again. And this time you will write it. He was repeating a grade. Because he allowed the anger to overpower him. He allowed people to influence his behavior. So he had to repeat a grade. We also have Jonah. In chapter 1, he is told to go to the people of Nineveh. And he started to Tashish. What happened in chapter 2? Repeat. God said, after he had took him to the, to the fish, so some repeating will take us to places we, are, we don't desire. He found himself in an undesirable place because he was failing the grade. Also in our lives, we will never pass a grade unless we have passed it indeed. If we do not hear God when He says Nineveh, we think He said Tashish. The same with transformation. We will need to go back to the heat. And then we will come back, okay? 
Amen. We are spiritual beings. But we possess a soul. And we dwell in a body. So today we are focusing on spiritual transformation. Because we are spiritual beings. Let us read from the book of Psalm chapter 22. In verse number one. It says, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning. These words were spoken by a mighty man. His name is David. In verse 18, he says, They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. I'm hearing grumbling and grumbling and grumbling. In verse 2, he says, Oh my God, I cry out by day. But you do not answer. By night, and I'm not silent. And we find another man by the name of Job joining him in the complaining. Chapter 23 of Job. Verses 8 and 9. 8 and 9. He says, but if I go to the east, he is not there. How? If I go to the west, I do not find him. How? When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. In other words, Job is saying, God is not in the north. God is not in the south. God is not in the west. And God is not in the east. Then where is God? As far as Job is concerned, when he is in this situation, he is saying God is not there. God does not exist. God does not care for my situation. So I am hearing grumbling and grumbling from two men. Two great men. David and Job. Now when David was continuing in Psalm 22 verse 6 he says but I am a worm and not a man. He says but I am a worm and I'm not a man. I'm scorned by men and despised by the people. So these two men are grumbling because of the situation they find themselves in. Things are not favorable. But then we come to the new covenant. In Hebrews 10 verse 1 It says The law is only a shadow of the good things that are to come in Colossians 2.17 it says the reality is found in Christ Hebrews 7.22 says Jesus is a covenant of a, is, a, is a guarantee of a better covenant Jesus is the guarantee of the best covenant so Jesus brought transformation from the law 
to the grace because we find him answering what these two men were saying so what David said in Psalm 22 verse 1 we find Jesus responding to it and we find Jesus fulfilling it in Matthew 27 verse 46 it says about the ninth hour Jesus cried out a loud voice Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatan, which means my God, my God why have you forsaken me? Forty six. Matthew twenty two, verse number forty six. Twenty seven. Verse forty six. Eri, Natch finger, Savoraru, yes, so at Abamukosiari. Eli, Lama Sabatani. The Urimu Zimuanga, Zimuanga, I want us to agree here. Psalm 22 verse 1 David is saying David My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now in Matthew 27 verse 46 What David had said is being fulfilled when Jesus came. So Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. And what was written in verse 18 when David said they divided my garments among them and cast lots of my clothing we find it in verse 35 of Matthew 27 it says when, when they had crucified him they divided up his clothes by casting lots so Matthew 27 35 is the fulfillment of Psalm 22 verse 18 are we all together? Are we together, church? Now in John 1930, the Bible says Jesus said, he shouted, it is finished. Hallelujah. He said it is finished. In other words, grace is taking over. And when he was hanging on that tree, the Bible says he took up our infirmities. He carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our iniquities. For our transgressions, he was crushed. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are here. So it is finished. Bye bye, law. Hello, Grace. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is illegal. It is invalid. It is out of space or scope. It is out of syllabus. For you today to take Psalm 22 verse 1 and utter it like David did and say my God, my God why have you forsaken me? It is an insult to the grace which came with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. 
we have adopted a new law Job and David were qualified to say what they said because they were preparing for the coming of the Messiah now the Messiah came he fulfilled the law he gave us grace now we come to Hebrews we find Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 and we find Jesus saying never will I leave you never will I forsake you that is the scripture of grace it kicks out my God my God why have you forsaken me so you cannot be a Christian and cry out that your God has forsaken you he never leaves you, he never forsakes you. I like the songs that we sing, we say, I like the song that we sing that it never changes. Doesn't leave. Right. Right. And we sing and say he's always there. But the problem is sometimes we forget. When we are faced with situations, we begin, we begin to say, Why me? We say, Where is this God that I have been serving? We think we are qualified like Job. We think we are qualified like David. Job was qualified because he did not have the Bible like you have it. David was qualified because he did not have the Bible. Now we have transformation. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. We know what happens when we go through storms like Job. We know took place in heaven without us being informed it was stemmed by God and he said my child can overcome this and he posted to the devil and said my child can overcome this now when the test comes we have reverence we know what happens after the test. God restored the double portion. That like you did with Job. He got a double portion of what he lost. Job was grumbling along the way. Because he did not know what happens when a person loses everything. We know what happens when a person loses everything. God restores everything that the locusts have eaten. We have a reference. We are supposed to be a better generation. We cannot behave like the Old Testament. We have the blood of Jesus. Prophet. They did not have a checklist to check if they 
were prophesying correctly. We are a better generation. We can test prophecies with the scripture. It is unfortunate that we can listen to, to false prophets in this day and age. When we have reference of the scripture, they didn't have all this. We cannot fail like they did. We cannot cry out and say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken us like this? But we thank God for David. We thank God for David. That in chapter 22, he showed us an old dispensation. He showed us an old covenant. He showed us an old testament. But in chapter 23, there was total dispensation. Total transformation. We see him no longer confirming that he is a worm. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you remember in chapter 22? He says, I'm not a human being. I am just a worm. But in 23, Transformation took place. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in one. This is the new dispensation language. This is the language of the transformed generation. This is the language of the generation that is working with the Holy Spirit. This is the language of a generation which has the in the New Testament. This is the language of a generation which has been cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. Which washes as white as snow. And he says he makes me lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. He is not even praying. He's not asking God to be his shepherd. He is confirming that the Lord is my shepherd. He is not asking God to say, God, please make me not to want. He is saying, I shall not want. He is not asking God to make him lie in green pastures. He is saying, God, me lying green. He is not even asking God to lead him beside still waters. He is confessing that God leads me beside still waters. He is not crying and saying, God, please restore my soul. But he is saying, God restores my soul. So I am bound to honor 
I don't know how we were. When I am going through, Mosinich Kopira, the valley of shadow of death, he lives with me. Unane. We are talking about a man who knows what it is Unane. to go through the valley of shadow of death. Unane. Because Unane. one day he met a Goliath. Unane. He met a man called Goliath. Who was huge and terrifying? Who was intimidating? No, no, This man realized that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I shall not lack victory. Even in this intimidating situation. Even in this Goliathic information. This huge situation which is bigger than me. I shall not let victory. And he reminded the Goliath. You come to me with a sword and a spear. I got the name. I got the name. I got the name. And I come unto you with that name. And in 1 Samuel 17, verse 15, the Bible says, Without a shred in his hand, David defeated Goliath. David akunda Goliath. Without a sword. In his hand. Without a physical sword. In his hand. He defeated Goliath. Akunda Goliath. He does not need a physical sword. says one day 
when Saul was persecuting David. God made it possible. You can read the whole of chapter 24. God made it possible for Saul to be in the hands of David. That there's one thing that David did. He did not kill him. Again. In, in chapter 26 when we read 23 it says the Lord delivered you into my hand but I would not lay my hand on you only a transformed Christian can do that and do you know what happened in this scripture Twice, Saul wanted to pin David against the wall. Now God presented David with two chances to can revenge. Hallelujah. So every time someone offends you, every time you get hurt by someone or something, opportunity to repay evil with evil will be presented to you. For every action, there's a reaction. So you will be presented with opportunities to repay evil for evil for everything that is done. What you do about the situation depends on whether you have been spiritually transformed or not. So spiritually transformed people behave like David. They do not repay. They know the Bible. They know. But in Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Roma 12, 19. The Bible says, When your enemy is hungry, you must give him food to eat. When your enemy is thirsty, you must give him a drink. The Bible in Matthew 5, Matthew 5 from 43, 43, it says you must even bless him. You must even love him. So there are four things to do to an enemy. Only four things to do to an enemy. Number one, to give him food. Number two, to give him a drink. Number three, to love him. Number four, to bless him. And full stop. Full stop. No revenge. I know the defense. Only the transformed people can do that. Those who are not transformed, they will want to revenge. But the Bible says no. When the rain comes, it does not only fall in your house. It also falls next door to a neighbor. Who has told you on the face that I hate you? It also falls on a woman who has taken your husband. It also falls on someone who has cursed you. It, has, it also falls on your co who got a promotion which you think you should have received when rain comes it falls on them also and that is what God says you should do blessing I will bless you you with blessing I will bless you but you need to be totally transformed David says you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows and he says surely 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 me 
There is no element of doubt. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Nobody can speak the house of the Lord for me. Nobody to pray for me so that I can dwell in the house. It is myself who speak it. I decree it. And when I decree it, it gets established. Because I know that God promised me in Isaiah 43 verse 2 he says when you pass through the waters I will be with you and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep you over and when you walk through the fire you will not be burnt the flames will not set you ablaze we thank God for the Hebrew boys three Hebrew boys they did not have what we have today. They did not have scripture like us. They were not filled with the Holy Spirit. But they understood that when we go into the fire, God will go with us. That is why they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, our God will save us. But even if he does not, we are not to your God. And we find Christians today bowing to other gods in their different forms just because they are frightened by the situation. It needs a totally transformed person to know that God is able to make the lion's mouth shut even when they are hungry we have been given authority so let us behave like a generation which has been given authority because in Luke 10 verse 19 Jesus said I have given you authority Yes, or to trample on snakes, on scorpions, and to overcome all power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means harm you. And in Acts 28, we found Paul when they had gone through a shipwreck it was cold the bible says they gathered sticks they wanted to make a fire so a snake when it felt some heat it came and it bites some Paul the Bible says people expected him to suffer ill effects. They expected him to swell up and suddenly fall dead. But Paul understood scripture that we have been given authority to trample upon scorpions and snakes nothing shall harm us after they waited for a long time nothing unusual happened to Saul the Bible says they changed their mind about him may, may you stick to God so that people can change their minds about you may you be totally transformed to a point where you understand 
that nothing shall by any means harm you hallelujah 